Well, good morning and welcome to our service this morning. Uh, whether you're here in the room or uh, at home, wherever you are, you're welcome to enter this space. There is a space of spiritual connection with God. We don't need to be in a church to connect with God spiritually. We don't need to be in a service to connect with God spiritually. But here today, we set aside this time to, uh, to hear from God. So welcome. I pray that you will hear from him today. Welcome, especially in the room, the family of Jessica and the friends and well-wishers of Jessica who will be baptised later on today. But we are um, in our services of late been doing a mini-series uh, on faith, hope, and love. Uh, and today, John will be preaching on faith. And in a moment, we'll be worshipping God uh, for his faithfulness. Now, Scripture understands faith as, as, as belief, as trust, uh, confidence, Fidelity. But only God is good. Only God is true to himself. And only God can be trusted. And the scripture today likens faith to, to perseverance. And another part of scripture, Lamentations, says the steadfast love, the steadfast love of the Lord never changes. His mercies are new every morning. And I wonder if there are some here this morning or online who feel that God has given up on you. God has no time for you. Well, the steadfast love of the Lord never changes. God is here for you today in this time, in this space. He never gives up on you. Let's take a moment of quiet for you to connect with that great God, and then we'll worship. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All of my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the good. Have led me through the fire. 
let's just remain standing and remain silent. When we invite God to come, he comes. When we feel his presence here this morning. They feel it at home too. It's not a presence that just gets conjured in this space. It's a presence that's in our hearts. So as lovely as it is to have this collective worship, what God desires more than that is the worship of your heart, the collective worship of you and him, you and your maker. And so, Father, we thank you that you can turn every heart around, that you are with us even when we don't know you're working within us. And so we pray now as we open up your scripture, as it's read and explained to us, that even now you'd be working in our hearts to show us how much you love us, to show us what you want us to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The readings this morning are taken from 1 Corinthians 13, 13 and Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 to chapter 11, verse 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And, but my righteousness, one will live by faith, and I will take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But do not believe, belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Now faith in confidence is what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed by God, so that what is seen was not made of what was visible. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word, and as we come to explore it now this morning, we ask that you'll speak afresh to our hearts and minds and lives. Amen. We so often use the word faith in so many ways. Faith, what we know. Faith in someone. Faith, something we own. But what is faith? What is that most amazing gift of faith? It's one of the three gifts we're looking at at the moment. Faith, hope, and love. And later on in the building, when we have the baptism service, we remember that faith is a gift of God. But well, what is that gift that God gives us? Well, I want to start by exploring that gift of faith by thinking of a particular situation. I want you to imagine that you are walking along one side of the valley. And you've often walked along by this river, by the valley, and you've often wanted to be able to cross over and see what's really on the other side to understand what is just there, to kind of have a view and have a part, but it often seems there's no way to cross. And then one day as you're walking along, you look up and you see that someone set up one of those rope bridges. You haven't seen it there before, but today you've seen it. There's a rope going across, and there's another rope for you holding on with your hands. And you think, I'll go and have a little look at this. So you make your way at the top of this little cliff edge and all of a sudden it doesn't seem such a good idea anymore. All of a sudden it seems daunting or scary. But then you see that there's a person at the top and they help you to put on your harness and you see there's a little safety wire and you clip into that safety wire so that as you cross, if you fall off, you're still held. And it's almost that that just gives you that little bit of confidence. 
So just imagine as you make your way just to the edge of this bridge, this rope bridge, and you put your feet on the rope. Kind of like you put one foot gingerly just there in front of you, and it's kind of wobbling a little bit, but you're putting it there just to see. And you're holding on to the other rope for your hands. And all of a sudden you realize you're holding on so tight that your hand is going white because you're that worried. But after a while, you take the confidence and you take one little step. You take one little step. You take one little step. And as you start journeying out on this bridge, you suddenly realize it doesn't feel so bad. And you start getting the confidence up and you start being able to go a little bit faster. And like loads of things, you see somebody walking along and you start waving and having fun. But then a gust of wind comes and all of a sudden you're shaking and you go back to holding really solid. And then you have the confidence to make one move after the other. One move after the other. One foot in front of the other. And then as you're going along, in one particular moment, your foot slips and you fall. And there's that moment of free falling. And then the safety rope catches you. And you suddenly rest there for a while. And you climb back onto the bridge. One step after another step. You get to enjoy the view again this time. You can look right around. You can even sometimes dare to look down. Although if you're ever going across one of those, I don't hugely recommend that. But you keep making it. And you keep going until eventually you get to the other side. Why do I use that analogy? Well, I think that's a really helpful analogy for how we look at faith. So often, there's something in us that realizes there is something more than what is before our eyes. There is something on the other side of the river. There's something that is more to life. Sometimes we're really excited about exploring it, but other times we're just nervous. And sometimes we just sometimes spot it. It's as if it's always been there, but we just haven't seen it before. It's as if God suddenly goes, hey, look, here it is. But then you've got a choice as to whether to start to cross or not. And God often gives us that safety line, that thing that enables us to start out on a journey of faith, of following Jesus in the everyday. But like most things, when you start trying them, you take small steps. And it's that as you step out on the bridge, you take a small step. And because it is solid the first time you do it, You can take another step, step by step by step. You build confidence. And there are times that you really feel like you're doing well in faith and you really enjoy knowing God and you look around and you celebrate and you wave at your friends. But there are also times where you feel uncertain, where the wind blows you and you feel less sure. Or even there are times when you fall off and you doubt there is even God around. And yet, even in those moments, that safety line is holding you. And God is helping you to climb back up and to carry on. You see, that safety line is so much about who God is. In Timothy, it talks about how even if we are unfaithful, God remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. You see, like all pictures, this is where sometimes it could slightly break down in that a bridge can break, but a person is very different. Now, all of us will have had family or friends who've let us down at different moments in time, but we've also had many times where they've come through for us. And faith isn't something abject. Faith is the gift of trust in a person, in God, in Christ Jesus. And that faith in a person of Jesus is there that is solidly shown day in, day out. You see, in our reading, we saw where even faith meant that Jesus was involved in creation. God was involved in creation. 
And in faith, we see where Jesus was born and lived amongst us. But as we look at the scripture, we see that Jesus not only showed us what God is like, he was God, but he was sinless. He did the things that you and I couldn't do because he was sinless. And eventually, because of his love for you and for me, he went to the cross and he died in our place. Why? So that all the wrong things we've done get cleaned up. All the wrong things we do have been covered up and taken by him. And because he has risen to life again, we too can trust in Jesus and know life with him. We too can know not just life with him now, we can know eternal life. We can actually walk once again on the other side of the river with Jesus. And the journey and life of faith is crossing that bridge. It's walking with a person. It's entrusting him because of who he is, because of what he said, because of what he's done, and how we live. That's the life of faith. And faith is that gift of God. It's that actually God helps us to start to see, first of all, where that bridge is. And it's faith that helps us to take those steps. He encourages us to lean into them. And it's faith that means that we know there is that safety line, that place at any moment that God will hold on to us, for nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That we can always journey and walk with God. So what's our part in this? Well, first of all, there is a place of trust. Trusting in what Jesus has done for us. Trusting that he's forgiven us. Trusting that he's died for us and risen again. That we can walk with him in the everyday. That we have a new start. But then trusting in the way of taking those little steps. Just as going onto that bridge took a little step and a little step. It's about choosing to lean in. It doesn't matter if you sometimes stop, but it's about choosing to keep on leaning in, choosing to keep stepping forward. You know, that's the whole point. In verse 38 of our reading, you will need to persevere. You keep on persevering so that you receive what is promised. God's laid it all out there. The bridge is there. The safety line's there. But you have to choose to cross and walk with Jesus. You have to choose to keep on going. If you fall off, you have to choose to climb back on. You have to keep on going on. You have to choose to keep going. Because it's as we live by faith that it shows that we're right with God. That's verse 38. It's not that we make ourselves right by God. We can't do that. Jesus did that for us. But it's as we journey in the life of faith that we get to be able to become right with God. It's the demonstration of that life of faith. And verse 39, we do not belong to those who shrink back, but to those who have faith and are saved, who trust, who stop, who keep going, who keep persevering. You see, chapter 11, verse 1, has it like this. Faith is confidence of what we hope for and certainty, assurance about what we do not see. We do not see everything about what heaven is like. We do not see everything about the walk of faith. But we have confidence in Jesus. We have confidence in who he is and what he's done. And we have confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit who enables us to experience that and to know that each and every day. We have confidence to take the steps on the journey. Today in the baptism, it's the first steps on the journey. For each of us, when we come to faith, there are first steps on the journey. Having confidence in what we hope for and certainty that we do not see. I'd love it if you wanted, either at the end of today or during this week, that you read the rest of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 has so many amazing stories. It goes, by faith, Abraham. By faith, Noah. 
by faith, Enoch. It's by faith that each of those amazing characters of the Old Testament stepped forward and trusted God and saw how God came through them. But they hadn't seen Jesus. For us, we have this amazing privilege where the book of Hebrews shows us exactly who Jesus is, what he's about, and why we can trust him. And so for us, having faith each and every day, we can see how God comes through for us. We can see how he's involved in healing, or he's involved in comfort, or in provision, or in trust. By faith, we understand. By faith, we see. By faith, we keep trusting and we keep going. Faith is a gift of God. And it's as you take each step, it builds the muscle. It builds your strength. So I guess my question for each of us today, as we look at the gift of faith, which God says, I love to give to you, is whereabouts are you? Whereabouts are you on the journey of faith and trusting in Jesus? Maybe it's that you've just decided to come here today or join online, and you've never even heard of Jesus before, and all of a sudden you start seeing, like I saw that bridge, you start seeing that this might be something for you. It might be that you're just starting out on the journey of faith and you need the courage to put one step in front of the other. It might be that actually you're having a great time and you're seeing God doing things in all kinds of ways and seeing how he's come through for you and you're waving and saying well done and thank you. It might be though that in this moment a gust of wind has brought you and you feel a bit wobbly about faith. Or about God. And God wants to just bless you and strengthen you. Or it might be that years ago you went, yep, I had faith, I trusted Jesus, and I seem to have fallen off. Today is an opportunity to ask God again, to have faith, to choose to get back on that bridge, to cross to the other side. You see, so often, faith requires a response from us. But the reason it requires a response is because God has already opened our eyes. He's already leaned in. He's already provided the ropes. He's provided the safety net. He walks with you. He journeys with you. He hopes for you. And he dreams for you. But we have a choice to go no or yes. We have a choice to keep going. We have a choice to keep experiencing a life that is more than the life of the present. A life of faith. A life where when we looked at hope a few weeks ago, you could see the world differently and journey into it. Where last week we realized God loves us and only ever wants the best for us and is for us. And where by faith and trust, we actually have the strength to choose to step into it. So the question for all of us is, how are we choosing to step into the life of faith today? How are we choosing to trust in Jesus and follow today? Are we living in the fullest way in faith, in certainty of what we do not see, in confidence of hope? Why? Because God has started to reveal it to us in our lives, in Scripture, in the person of Jesus, and by the work of his Spirit. Let's just pause for a moment. I just invite you, wherever you are, just to close your eyes. And I gave you an analogy a few moments ago, an analogy of either taking those first steps, or maybe being blown about, or maybe celebrating, or maybe having fallen off, and that opportunity of climbing back on. I'm just going to ask the Lord just to meet with you with whichever one of those you think you might be. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And I want to pray in this moment that Holy Spirit, wherever each person is at, you will meet them in their life of faith. That you will give them that gift of faith. That if it's the first time that they've seen it, you will help them to trust you. Father, if it's to take the next step, even the tiniest one, will you give them the strength and the faith to do it? To trust you again to pray, to trust you again to provide, to trust you again for hope. Father, if it's in the good place and they're waving around and celebrating, Father, may they celebrate the faith they have. 
But Father, if it's where they've fallen off, will you give them the strength to climb back on, to trust you again and to know that you are faithful and still holding on to them no matter what they've done, no matter what they've said, no matter who they are. Holy Spirit, will you impart a new gift of faith to us this morning? Will you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a deeper, deeper, deeper trust in you? And as we just allow the Holy Spirit to come and impart faith and strength and hope and assurance and confidence for us, we're going to invite the band to come back and sing. And if you want to, you're welcome to join in. But just take this opportunity to choose to receive the gift of faith, to trust God, and to go on that journey with him to take that next step, to be secure in him, to receive his love, and to know his hope. We ask that in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.
One of the best ways to be exercising faith is through prayer. And so you're welcome in this moment just to close your eyes and be praying anyway for the people you know and for those that you would want to be leaning in for. But also we're going to have the prayers now led for us as well if you want to join in with those wherever you are. Thank you, Father, that we can bring our prayers to you on this Sunday as we are gathered here in your name. We're thinking about faith today, Lord, a gift from you. It's not a gift we are given just for ourselves. It's a gift to share. I want to pray for people who share their faith. The church is blessed with a whole raft, this church, of mission partners in a variety of countries. We support them to do your work, which is also our work. Often they work in awkward, difficult and even hostile places. So I'm going to pray for them today. We pray for Richard and Monica Harvey, who work with Jews for Jesus. Mel and James Lynch, they're in Birmingham. We pray for Flavio and Cinzia de Lima in Germany. Prem and Indira Subidi in Nepal, Charlotte Bolton working in the Dust Project in Sri Lanka, the street pastors working here in Hartford and Ware, Future Hope who work with young people locally, CPAS who help churches to be effective in mission, All Nations College locally who train people for mission, and Tear Fund with whom we work in Rwanda. I want to pray for Esther Moisey. She's not a mission partner of the church, but she is the daughter of a church member and is currently working in southern Iraq, where I am told it is significantly hotter than it is here. Lord, we lift all these good people up to you, and we pray you will strengthen their faith every day and support them in the demanding work they've undertaken. We pray you will prepare hearts and open doors for them, and we pray you will protect them and bless them richly. And Lord, I would like to pray for us here today. I wonder if there is anyone here who has never doubted their faith, or wondered if God is really there, or if he is there, is he listening? Sometimes our faith is really tested by the evil of the world. We wrestle with the notion of a good God who can allow very bad things to happen to innocent people, but will sometimes find us a parking space when we need one. It's all too much for us to get our heads around. We don't understand why some prayers are answered and others are not. This seems to be something we have to work at continuously but it's something with which we can help each other. Google deals with the dilemma and states that the Bible tells us in Matthew 25, 41, that one day all evil will be done away with. Until that day, we can rely on God's grace. He doesn't always prevent tragedy, but his grace will always see us through it. Thank you, Google. In Philemon, verse 22, Paul says, And one more thing, prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Thank you for this example, Lord, of true faith. Paul really believed his prayers would be answered and was prepared to put plans in place on the strength of that. I sometimes find it hard, Lord, to pray in your will and believe that your will will work out best for me. Sometimes I believe that I can see the best way forward, and I just need God to facilitate it. 
I don't think I'm alone in this. But our Saviour said, yet not my will but thine be done. Let us lay our troubles at the foot of the cross and put our trust in our Heavenly Father. And Father, lastly, we pray for our whole church family and all the people in the community that this church touches. I pray for everyone, whatever their vulnerabilities, that they will be safe and manage to cope with this hotter weather that we're expecting. I pray for the children in the run-up to breaking up from school, on the trips and outings and when they get excited and it's sunny and they forget the things that parents have told them to be careful about. Please keep them safe, Lord. Please protect them. We thank you that we can pray together, Father, and we offer up our prayers in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. And you know, one of the things that continues to build faith is that place of praying and seeing God answer and seeing him come through. And it's actually about praying his kingdom in for his kingdom to come. And so we're going to gather all our thoughts and prayers together now in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. So do join in if you're online or here in person. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And just a couple of notices, as we go on into the summer season, there are still services at 9 and 10.30 each week here, and there are children's provision at 10.30 each week. Also, after some Sundays, if you wish to stay around uh, for a picnic, you're welcome to be able to do so. You'll see those details in the church notice sheets. But we also have several activities for children during the summer called Summer Blast, and I think that flyer's coming up here. So you'll see there's a number of those during the whole of the holidays spread out. So if you'd like to be able to join us, you'll see the details there and how to book, either on our notice sheet or online. And uh, if you don't get our notice sheet at the moment by email, please do sign up. We'd love to stay connected to you. There are forms at the back of church, or you can email the office. But let's now continue in our worship this morning as we stand to sing our next song. Let's stand.
you so much for joining with us here this morning. It's been great to be able to connect and worship with you all. And we hope that you're able to enjoy wherever you are. It's also a huge thank you to all those you that support our ministries in so many ways and through the generosity of your giving. If you'd like to join with those that support in that way, full details can be found on our website and you can go there using the QR code on the video in a moment. But let's take a few more moments just to receive God's blessing this morning. And I invite you just to open up your hands, just as a sign of openness to receive from the Lord. And so may the God of hope himself, may he fill you with all joy and peace, so that as you trust in him, your life might overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, surround you and flow from you now and always. Amen. Oh, the mystery You crossed the great divide to show your love for me as you hung upon the cross and spilled your blood for me and now I see you my sin held you there it has no hold on me for you rose again and now you have the victory Forever I will sing, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for the cross, how I love you, Jesus, you have won my heart, this is love, oh, this is love. Give my life to you, it's his offering. Oh, it's all I have, but you deserve my everything. Forever I will sing. Thank you, oh, thank you, thank you for the cross. How I love you, Jesus. You have won. This is love. This is love. Oh, my justice. Oh, my justice. You laid your glory down for me. Majesty, yeah. Oh, Majesty, you laid your glory down for me. Yeah. Oh, Majesty, oh, Majesty, yeah. Amazing love, how can it be? Oh, Majesty. Majesty Forever I will say Thank you, oh, thank you Thank you for the cross How I love you Jesus, you have won my heart This is a lie This is a love. This is a love. Thank you, thank you, thank you 
for the cross. How I love you, Jesus. You who won my heart. This is love. This is love.